this is my second recording from this afternoon, Thursday, um, in uh, Hull. I'm at, I'm at uh, Paragon Square opposite the station and opposite um, Hammonds of Hull, which appears to be shut, shut down now, which is very sad because I went there for ice cream as a kid. But uh, the first recording, I'm not sure that I can put it, make it public. It was kind of very, very precious. And um, just thank God for that. Some of the people who'd spoken to me about the gospel before came back and asked again, and there was some very serious discussion. I thank God for that. Father, I pray for those people. I pray that they would come under conviction of sin. I pray that they would find mercy. I pray that they would very seriously understand the truth of your word, and I pray that they would very seriously um, give themselves, cry out to you, cry out to the Lord Jesus Christ, that they would read the word, that they would know the word, that they would... Um, find your salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. And I pray for the man I just spoke to as well from the Jehovah's Witnesses. And I pray that he would leave the Jehovah's Witnesses and go to a church where he gets taught the Word of God and that he would find your salvation. And I pray you'd help me to continue preaching now outside um, Hammond's. Lord, have mercy upon me and fill me with your spirit now. I ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So I'm going to continue preaching. I was preaching from Hebrews. So I'm going to continue preaching from the book of Hebrews, where we read in Hebrews chapter 2 in the New Testament, in the Bible. The Bible is the word of God. We read, therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him. God also bearing them witness with both signs and wonders, with diverse miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost, according to his own will. The Bible says, How shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? This great salvation has been preached to you now for a very long time and some of you have heard it again and again and some of you decided you want nothing to do with it. Others of you are curious and some of you couldn't care less. But you have had a great salvation preached to you. You have had the salvation which comes from God preached to you. That salvation which comes by faith alone, in Jesus Christ alone, that salvation... God's not real! God, God reigns in the heavens. God made the heavens and the earth. And God will judge you for your sins if you do not repent and believe on him because there is a day of judgment. And there is a wrath to come and there is a judgment to come. So God, God, my, God is the God of heaven and earth. He is the eternal God, the one true eternal God, creator and maker of all things. And he is the saviour, he is the saviour of all those who put their trust in Jesus Christ. And if you put your trust in Jesus Christ, God will have mercy on you. So great salvation. So great salvation, having faith in Jesus Christ, knowing Jesus Christ, knowing the one who is the saviour of the world, knowing the one who laid down his life, who became a sacrifice for sin, so that whosoever believes on the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, has forgiveness of their sins and mercy and the salvation of God and the certainty of everlasting life. Now, without Jesus Christ, you don't have life. Without Jesus Christ, you can't have life. Without Jesus Christ, there only remains a certain fearful expectation of judgment. Now, you do not want to go to hell, my friend. You do not want to go to hell. But you will go to hell if you do not repent. And you will go to hell if you do not believe. And if you will go to hell if you do not turn from your sin and cast yourself on Jesus Christ, if you do not repent and, and tell God and, and cry out, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner, confess your lying, confess your swearing, confess your stealing, confess your sexual immorality, your pornography, your adultery, your fornication. Confess your sins to Almighty God and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. 
Because if you do not believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, there is no Saviour. You are neglecting so great salvation and you won't escape the fires of hell. And you won't escape the wrath to come. And you won't escape the judgment to come. And you won't escape the damnation that God has spoken of in his word and the judgment that he has spoken of. The wicked, the Bible tells us, shall be turned into hell. And all the nations that forget God, like England, for example, like Great Britain, like the United Kingdom, whatever you want to call it, all the nations that forget God, the wicked, shall be turned into hell. And you, my friend, will be turned into hell if you do not repent of your sins and do not believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth on him, on Jesus Christ, that is, should not perish but have everlasting life. Without Jesus, you can't have everlasting life. We live in days of syncretism. We live in days when we are told by the government and the authorities and the World Economic Forum and people like that that all roads, and the Pope and others, that all roads lead to God, that all religions are of equal value. Well, this is a lie. There is only one way back to God. There is only one Saviour. There is only one who can deliver us. There is only one who can have mercy on us. There is only one who can reconcile us to God, who can take away the requirements of the law of God against us, who can cleanse us from our sins, who can make us clean, who can take away our guilt, who can fit us for heaven. And that is Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who is alive today. And Jesus Christ is on the throne of heaven today. And he reigns in the heavenly places today. And that's how we know that when we call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we will be saved. Because he is alive today. Because he reigns today. Because he is powerful to save today. Because his arm is not so shortened that it cannot save. Now you have an undying soul. You have an undying soul. And God will judge you for your sins. That is why you need Jesus Christ. That is why you need a Savior. That is why you need someone to take away your sins. Your lies condemn you before Almighty God. Your swear words condemn you before Almighty God. Your foul mouth is an open tomb, the Bible says. And God will judge you for your sins. God will judge you for your sins, but Jesus Christ will save you. Jesus Christ will give you life from the dead. Jesus Christ will have mercy on you. And he will wash away your sins in his blood. He went to the cross of Calvary. He laid down his life in the place of sinners. He loved sinners and gave himself for sinners. And the Lord Jesus, my friends, the Lord Jesus, he died in the place of sinners. There is no other saviour. There is no other sacrifice. There is no other name under heaven given to men whereby we must be saved. It is the name of Jesus Christ. It is the name of the crucified one who died and is risen from the dead. It is the name of the one who reigns over the heavens and the earth. It is the, one of the, the name of the one who died in the place of sinners like you and me. And the only way that I can be saved is by sacrifice. If the Lord Jesus laid down his life, I have a sacrifice for my sins. But apart from him, there is no further, no other, no different sacrifice. That is the only sacrifice that God will accept. In the Old Testament, in the Jewish temple, for year after year, for decade after decade, for century after century, the blood of bulls and goats and sheep and doves was shed. Endless numbers of animals and their blood was shed, but it can't take away our sin. It could only point to a better sacrifice. And the better sacrifice that God has appointed is the Lord Jesus Christ. So how will you stand on the day of judgment? Because crossing yourself isn't going to save you from your sin. Knowing Jesus Christ will save you from your sin. That won't help you. It's not going to help you unless you find Jesus. Unless you repent of your sin, unless you find Jesus Christ, your sin remains upon you and you will die in your sins. 
and there is a wrath to come, and there is a hell to come. Lots of young people mocking today, but that's good that they're coming past and hearing the message. Without Jesus Christ, we will die in our sins and wake up in hell. There is a wrath to come. There is a judgment to come. And we need that mercy that comes from God. Listen to this. How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? This salvation that we find that God has wrought in his son Jesus Christ. This salvation is great. It's a great salvation. It's a salvation that is sufficient for our sins. It's a salvation that does what it says it will do. It saves us, it washes us, it makes us clean before Almighty God. It is a great salvation. And to hear of this salvation, to hear of what God has done in Jesus Christ, is a very great mercy indeed. A very great mercy indeed. And oh, my dear friends, oh, the Lord Jesus will save you from your sin. The Lord Jesus will have mercy on you. The Lord Jesus will give you life. The Lord Jesus will cleanse you from your sin, but no one else can. So what do you trust in? I think if I were to talk to people in Hull today, I think most of them would say, well, we don't trust in anything. We don't need anything. There is no God. Or they'll say, well, I trust in myself. I'm good enough. And their God in their minds will be a God who has to go along with everything they say and go along with everything they do because he is a God of their own making, he or she or it. But you see, the God of the Bible, who is always described in the male gender, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, Archbishop of Canterbury, please note, Archbishop of York, please note, Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and he was born of a virgin, that Jesus Christ, who is God, who is the Son of God, my dear friends, there is one true eternal God. There is one living God. There is one God of righteousness and holiness and of infinite power. Now, you have a soul. And you have a soul. And so do you. And so do you. You have souls. Okay, so death isn't the end. Okay. God isn't real. God is real. There's a God who made the heavens and the earth. A God who made all things. And he made you and me. Now, I know you're going to say my parents made me. What? With his penis? No, no, I'm not going to talk at that level. Okay. Our parents, our parents, okay, were our progenitors, okay, they made us, but in the truest sense, every single one of us has also been created by God. It was his purpose that... By his it was, that, that, I'm not going to talk at that level. By his decree, God decreed that every one of us should exist. He knows you, he knows me. We were created for you the glory me. of... Yep, yeah, sorry. We were created for the glory of God. Uh, okay, we were created to glorify God. We were. Nah, okay. Stop it. Be respectful. Yeah. Nah. Excuse me. Do you know God? Yes. Is he your mate? Is he what? Sorry. Your mate. No, he's my he's my saviour. He's my God. What did he save you from? He saved me from my sins. From your what? sins. My sins. The sins. sins are the things that we do that break but God's commandments. Okay. So when you are crude, when you are crude, or when you when you are crude, or when you are rude. You sin against God, and whether you find it funny or not, God sees it, and God is a holy God, and He hates sin. God says, God says that the wicked, the wicked, shall be turned into hell. So you'll be turned into hell. That means you'll be placed in hell. I'll be hell for eternity. Now, what? Do you, let me ask you a question. Then. Let me ask. Let me ask you a question because you're being very quiet. Is it all right if I ask you a question? Okay. What do you think hell is like? Hell is a shit place. No, I wasn't asking don't you. Swear. Please don't swear. Because swearing is sinful, it's corrupt. Okay, so you don't want to answer that question. No, answer. Okay. What do you what, what do you think hell is like? I think it's a bad place. Okay, okay. I'm so 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 would you want to go to hell? No. Okay. So the Bible teaches us that hell is a place of eternal torment. That means you never escape from it. You're always there. It's a place of terrible torment. That means it's the worst pain you can imagine and then much worse than that. Forever. Burning pain. Forever. You're never consumed. It never ends. It goes on forever. And the Bible teaches us that for one swear word, for one swear word, What's like for? So, for one Don't swear mean, word, oh, sorry, for sorry. one swear word, for one swear word, you would deserve to go to hell for eternity. Oh shit. Oh no, shit. So, okay. You do not deserve, you do not deserve to go to heaven. Not, none of us Everyone deserve to go to heaven. Swore. So yes. To go to hell. Exactly. Well, the Bible says we're all sinners and we're all, you're, we've you're, all sinned. And it's not the only sin, there are many, many other kinds of so sin too. So we're all going to hell then? 
We are have all. You ever oh, many times. But the thing so of it is this. So but you're going to help. My sin is forgiven. So you're help. Listen to him. I am saved Listen because my sin is forgiven because Jesus Christ, my Savior, died for me on the cross of Calvary, and He took all my sin and all my swearing what? and all the terrible things that I've done and all the wicked things I've done and all the corruption in my heart and in my life. Excuse Jesus me. took all of it on Himself on the cross. Excuse me. Can I ask you something? Uh, Where are you? Uh, pretty much, uh, what's it called? James, you wasn't alive when you died. James. No, I wasn't, but, but Jesus... No, no, you wasn't thought about for millions okay. of years. So, we have a Bible. And this Bible is the Word of God, and this tells us all about the Lord Jesus Christ. And it shows us how we can find Him. It shows us how we can know Him, and it shows He's in Heaven, seated on the throne of Heaven. Wait, do because you believe he's that God. Easter is going to come back? Can I, I ask you a I, question? Jesus Christ will come back very soon. All the signs in the world are today. The Bible prophecy is being fulfilled and the Lord Jesus will do. He was first, then you. Okay. Who do you think out of all of us is going to go to heaven? None of you. At the moment. None, of, none of you are professing Sir. faith in Jesus Christ. Sir. I'll admit I've swore before, but I've never Sir. done anything bad. One Sir. swear word, one swear word would see you cast into hell so, for eternity. So how do I get away my sins? Uh, okay, so so the only way we can get away from our sins is by confessing our sins to God. And how do you do that? Well, uh, the, the, the Jesus. Okay, first of all, Jesus told a story about two men that went into a synagogue. One of them was a, a Pharisee, a religious man, a very well-respected religious man, you know. And the other man was, was, was a tax collector, and he was a thief, and he stole from the people. The Pharisee, the religious man, went in and said, I thank you, God, that I am not like other men. Well, I, I okay. have been to a Christian school, so okay. every morning, okay. every lunch, and every after school, yeah. we would pray. Okay. We three times a day. Okay, so. you can do all that and be lost. Okay, so... The second man, the second man was the, was the thief, and he, he wouldn't even lift up his eyes to heaven. He beat his breast and he said, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. We must confess our sins to God. Lord, I'm a swearer. Lord, I'm a liar. Lord, I'm a thief. And don't miss, don't miss the most important thing here. Okay, they'll come over to you, but listen to this. The most important thing is we must, we must repent of our sins. That's my cousin's mate, but yeah. Okay, we, we must repent of our sins. Repentance means we have to acknowledge our sins. Now, you say you've done nothing wrong apart from swearing occasionally. That's enough to get you into hell forever. Can I say one thing? So I'm afraid we're going to have to uh, leave you. Will I go okay. in hell for having sex? What? No, you're allowed to have sex. The Bible says that sex outside of marriage is sinful. And it also what? tells outside us oh, homosexual sex is also sinful. Homosexuality is can sinful. You can, with pleasure. Sorry, can, can, um, can I give you an email tonight? It's uh, kinswithacademy.org. Okay, sorry, I, I thought I had more of these left. I've only got one. Who's the best one to give it to? No. You were the last first. Okay, you. sorry. You can share it with your friends. I thought I had a cart, cartload of them, but I haven't. Uh, wait, so I'm supposed so you scan to that, uh, yeah, if you scan, scan if, if you scan that with your phone, you can scan those QR codes, and that'll take you to either my YouTube page or to another page on the internet with some of my yes. sermons. Repent and believe on the Lord Jesus. It's all about... It's all about Jesus. It's all about the Lord Jesus Christ, the Saviour of the world. It's all about the one who died so that our sins would be forgiven. It's all about the one who laid down his life. I am a Christian and I love Jesus Christ. Thank you. I love Jesus Christ and I know Jesus Christ. How? Is it well, your well, then. Well, Jesus is seated on the throne of heaven today and will soon return. But, theologically, theologically, we can hand it to one of your friends. Theologically, I love it. I love it. Okay, but make sure you use it. That's, that isn't funny, is it? Oh, that's Somebody worked hard to pay for that. That's, 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 see, that's, that's stealing as well, isn't that's it? Oh. Stealing is a sin. Oh now, we are guilty before God. And the only way that we can be saved is when we find Jesus Christ because he died on the cross of Calvary. His blood was shed for sinners. He laid down his life in the place of sinners. And he became oh a my. sacrifice for yeah. sin. Yeah. So you, yeah. need to find, yeah. you need to find Jesus Christ. Join the set. Where on the set? I'm not here to do that. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not here to do that. I found him. I sought for him and I found him because the Bible says, you will seek me. And you, God says, you will seek me and you will find me when you seek for me with your whole heart. No, I haven't. When you... The stealing, that's stealing. Cool. And the thief will have their place in the lake of fire. And you will never be able to you will never be able to say that I didn't warn you that there is a hell and I didn't warn you and I didn't tell you of the way of salvation. You're a thief, my friend, and you are a swearer. And you're proud. And you are an idolater. And you're sexually moral and impure. And you have a heart full of lust and corruption and wickedness. I'm going to carry on preaching because I don't have time for just messing around. I have to preach. There are other people who want to hear this message. Put it back to Not after it's been in your mouth, no. 
sorry for that. They'd be disrespectful. That's so horrible. This gospel tells us that Jesus is the saviour of the world. And if you find Jesus, your sins are forgiven and you will never go to hell. Why would you do you know, that? I am so sorry. I am so sorry. sorry that you are so poor and so destitute that you have to eat cardboard, my friend. I really am sorry. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry about that. Well, again, you'll have to answer I'm to God sorry, for it, because God sin is something that we answer to God for. No, him. No. I'm sorry, yes, I've yes. got something wrong with me. Yeah, I thought so. Right. It's called sin. It's called sin. And we've all got sin. We're all wrong. We're all bad before God. God looks at the heart. He knows He knows your thoughts. He knows when you hate people. He knows when, he knows, you know, Jesus said, whoever looks at a woman uh, to lust after her in his heart has committed adultery in his heart. God looks at the heart. He knows your thoughts. He knows your pride. He knows your greed. The love of money is the root of all evil. And uh, Jesus said, you cannot serve God and mammon. Just about everybody in hell today probably loves money and wants money. And that's what their life is about. But it's about the do you love money. You cannot do serve God and mammon. Do you love money. Well, if I love money, I cannot serve God. So, so, on, so, so whilst, whilst I find in my own heart a constant, a constant temptation to idolatry, loving money is idolatry. Nice to talk to you. Thank you. Please, 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 my friend, read the Bible and think about these things and pray about them. Jesus is alive and he hears prayers. He was dead. He is risen. Okay? It's not the love of money. It's the love of the Lord Jesus Christ. Do you think I should smoke weed? I think I've seen people who smoke weed who go mad, and I wouldn't want to see you go mad, so I'd say no. Okay? And it's sinful. Do you think? And it's sinful. And also, it often leads to harder drugs like heroin and other drugs, and that's something which, that's something which, which would kill you as well. Don't do it. I'm sorry, Don't do it. Don't throw away your life. That guy hates God. <laughs> I had a good chat with him the other day, actually. The one on the, the, one on the skateboard. No, him oh. there. Okay. There. What you don't know, what, what you don't know is, me. what you don't know is that you hate God. I, I love God. We all hate God. God is my dad. If you don't know Jesus Christ, you don't love God. Come on, lady. Okay. If you don't know Jesus Christ, you don't love God. Jesus said, "Whoever is not for us is against us." If you don't love Jesus, you don't know God. You can't love somebody you don't know, and you can't know God apart from the Lord Jesus Christ. Can I, can I get free Bibles? I'll give, you, I'll give you some scripture. You can download a Bible from scripture. You can go to a Christian church and they'll give you one. But this is, this is, this is a gospel of Mark and, and, and don't eat it. Okay? <laughs> Read it. Share it with your friends. And this is a gospel of Matthew. Okay? Thank you. So, my pleasure. Yes. So you see, I love talking about the Lord Jesus Christ because he's my saviour and I know him. I found him when I was 18 years old and now I'm what? much older than that. But I found the Lord Jesus. I've been a Christian for 41 right. years. Can you, yeah, can you yeah I have heard that. Sir, can you tell us, have you actually seen God in real life? No, have, no, sir. I haven't. I don't, I don't need to. No, sir. no, I don't need to. Sir, hey, I know him. I know Jesus. Well, come on, then. Thank you. Fuck you. Oh, you. Fuck you. <laughs> uh, Stop swearing. Oh, he's man. trying to take the Bible, man. This is so, called, if you're swearing, you like one, this leave one here. this man. I'm, I'm Okay, so yes, I, I know the Lord Jesus Christ. There are hundreds of millions of Christians in the world today who say they know Jesus Christ, they found him. I was a, I was a, I was a wild youth before I became a Christian. But you know, you, nobody's born a Christian. I became a Christian when I was 18. Well, I went to a Christian school at St Andrews. Uh, is that a Church of England school or Catholic school or what? Uh, no, it's a Christian school. Right, okay. So every Tuesday we went to our church. Yes, yes. Which church was that? St Andrews, you said? Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I, I, I don't know it. But you can go to a Christian school but never find the Lord Jesus Christ. Come to the it's all about God. Jesus. Or I used to think a lot of God. Come to yes. Jesus. Yes, yes. In, in my school. It's all about the Lord Jesus Christ. It's all about him. It's, it's all about him being the saviour of the world and, and us finding him. And to know him is to know life from the dead. There's, there's supernatural power. There's, there's real power so, in this gospel to save us. <laughs> Why would you say it? Right, I'm sorry. I, I didn't hear that. I don't want to hear it. Don't tell yeah, me what he said. Sorry. Okay. It doesn't matter. I, um, I forgive you, okay? I forgive you. Do you forgive me for the sins? Or I can forgive you for no, sins. Wait. I can sir, forgive you for sins through. against me, but only God will forgive you for all he's of your sins. He's got the LMC on his thing. What? He says in when I've he never to that rocket league. committed a sin against you. Excuse me, sir. The most powerful thing. So I have nothing to forgive you for. So I have nothing to forgive you for, but you are sinning the ho whole time that you are without God, you're sinning. The whole time that you are without God, you are sinning against God. You are sinning standing here right now because you do not love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind and strength. Your pride is sin. Your self-righteousness, I'm not so bad. That's sin. That's self-righteousness. So to smoke, is that a sin? Does it hurt you? I don't know. 
It's the barbell. Okay. So smoking is a sin because it does hurt us. It wrecks our lungs. Look at the pack. Look what's on the pack. They all smoke. They, they need to break the barbell. Yes, but that's not the only sin, is it? There are many other sins. And um, if we do something that harms us, we were created. Can we go? We were created by God for His glory. We were created by God for His glory. We were. Please, your foul language is horrible. Um, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay, I'm going to carry on preaching. Okay, sorry. Thank you for listening. Okay, but the Bible said, remember Jesus said, whoever looks at a woman to lust after in his heart has committed adultery in his heart. Jesus, thank you for talking. Read the Bible. Thank you for talking. Please take this seriously, my friend. Find the Lord Jesus Christ and you'll find life. There is a saviour. Jesus is the saviour of the world. Here, in Hebrews chapter 1, we read that Jesus is the... I'll, I'll get the words correct, so just look, give me a second to turn. But we read that Jesus is... The Lord Jesus Christ is the brightness of God's glory and the express image of his person. Now, you cannot be the brightness of God's glory. And you cannot be the express image of his person if you are not God. No one shares God's glory. God does not share his glory with another. So if Jesus is the brightness of God's glory, all the glory that belongs to Almighty God and belongs to Almighty God alone belongs to Jesus Christ. Now the language here hints at the Holy Trinity. It hints at God the Father and God the Son here. That Jesus is the brightness of God's glory and the express image of his person. The Lord Jesus can only be King of kings and Lord of lords. He can only be the, sa- he can only be the eternal God, the creator of heaven and earth, the maker of all things. And what I'm saying is this, when you reject Jesus Christ, that is who you're rejecting. You're rejecting the God of all glory. You're rejecting the God of all light, the God who is light and in him is no darkness at all. The God who is a consuming fire. He is the God with whom you have to do. He is the God before whom we have to stand. He is the God before whom we will answer for our sins. He is the God who looks at the heart. He is the God who judges sinners and casts the wicked into hell for their sins. And Jesus Christ will either be your saviour forever, from all your sin forever, or he will be your judge to everlasting torment and damnation in hell fire. And again, the Bible warns us, it just warns us, it says, Whosoever's name was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. My friends, if your name is not written in the book of life, you will be cast into the lake of fire. And if you do not know Jesus Christ, then your name is not written in the book of life. And you will be cast into the lake of fire. The only ow, ow. The only way that we can have our name written in the book of life. I was just hit really hard from behind by a certain man and it hurt. But I'm okay. Ouch. The Lord Jesus, he is the only one. Without, If we don't know Jesus Christ, the Lord bless you, sir. The Lord have mercy on you, sir. I forgive you and I commend you to the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord have mercy on you. Jesus Christ is Lord. And if our name is not written in the book of life, if we do not know Jesus, our name is not written in the Lamb's book of life. I suppose that's the first real violence I've suffered here in hell. Oh. But, now Jesus Christ is the saviour of the world. Now abortion, abortion is the slaughter of the innocents. Abortion is the shedding of innocent blood. Abortion is the murder of the unborn child and God sees it. And God's wrath is kindled against those who do such things. Abortion is a terrible sin, it is a foul sin, it is a vile sin. Abortion is mothers killing their own children. Well, I'll tell you the truth, my friend, there are many men whose hearts are broken because of the sin of abortion, whose own children were destroyed and they couldn't stop it. There are many men who are mourning and grieving over children who never came into this world, who were never born, who never found life. There are many men, my friends, 
who also grieve and mourn that they lost their children because of abortion. Yet abortion is a terrible sin. And sadly, there are many men who insist that their girlfriends or their partners or whoever have an abortion. And they become partakers in the shedding of that innocent blood. And they also become guilty before Almighty God. And they too must answer to God. And they too must give an account to Almighty God. Abortion is a terrible sin. Now we know that in the Bible, the Ten Commandments tell us, Thou shalt not commit murder. And God's commandments are exceedingly broad. Well, the Bible tells us, therefore, that abortion is murder. We are made human beings in the image of God. We are unique. We are created in His image. We are created for His glory. We are created to serve Him. We are created, my friends, to live for Him and to love Him with all our heart, soul, mind and strength. But we have no time for God and we will not have Him to reign over us. And therefore we go on our ways and we live for pleasure and we live for money and we live for our idols. And we rationalise it and we say we have to have an abortion so that we can continue with our lives doing what we want. And God sees it and God calls it murder. And whosoever's name was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Because there is a wrath to come and there is a hell to come. Turn from your evil ways, turn from your sins, turn from your lies, turn from your idols and your love of money and your pride and your foolishness and your laziness. Turn and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and he will give you life. He is raised from the dead. He is the saviour of the world. He is the one who delivers from the wrath to come and has mercy and gives salvation. And if you reject the Lord Jesus Christ, my friend, you reject your own mercies and you will not find salvation anywhere else. Jesus is the saviour. Jesus is the one that will have mercy and he will deliver you and give you life. Amen. Father, I pray that these two women standing in front of me here who are saying they don't want him, Lord, I pray that you'd so bring conviction of sin on them and their colleagues working in the building opposite that they would utterly, utterly repent, Lord, that there would be complete conviction of sin that comes upon the people there, Lord, from your Holy Spirit, directly by your power from heaven. Father, I pray that you'd have mercy on the man who hurt me, Lord, and I pray that he would be ashamed of his actions. I pray that he'd be absolutely horrified at what he's done, and I pray, Lord, that he would find your salvation. And um, I, I pray, Lord, that you would have mercy on me as well. And, Lord, I pray you bless the security guard opposite and that he would find your salvation. I pray, Lord, you bless those young men who were full of mockery but listened, Lord, and the others, Lord. I pray that you'd have mercy on all those who heard the gospel preached today. And this I ask and pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen.